We're often talking about how Pope Francis changed the papacy, but some of the biggest changes we take for granted today took place in the 27 years John Paul II was Pope. Today I spoke with John Thavis, who reported on the Vatican for 30 years with Catholic News Service. The biggest, probably best known one is World Youth Day, these gatherings of young people uh, every, every two or three years. World Youth Day really was his idea. It started in the Diocese of Rome in the 1980s, and it was so successful the first time around that they decided, let's make this even bigger and better and move it around the world. Along with John the Twenty-Third, John Paul II made great strides crossing the distance between the Pope and the people. For many centuries, really, the Pope has been seen as kind of a remote figure, as somebody who didn't mingle with the faithful all that often. And when he did, he was carried on a litter above the crowds. Uh, and John Paul came into the papacy with a whole different idea. Of course, probably the most famous uh, best known uh, of these events at the Vatican were his own participation in the sacraments. He was the first pope to actually uh, march into St. Peter's and confess the faithful on Good Friday. Uh, he was the first pope to baptize children on the feast of the baptism of Jesus in January. And these are things that, that he loved to do. He was a pastor and he wanted to bring this pastoral experience to the papacy. John Paul II was the first pope to decide, hey, you know, I look around at Christmas, I don't even see a Christmas tree in St. Peter's Square. I don't see a nativity scene. What's wrong with this picture? And, and so he said, let it happen. Let's make a nice big one. This Sunday is Divine Mercy Sunday, which itself is an innovation of John Paul II. And I think people forget or have forgotten that it was really John Paul II who wrote an encyclical on mercy, who instituted Divine Mercy Sunday as as, as something to be celebrated throughout the church, and who said, you don't really understand God, you don't really understand the faith, unless you understand him as a figure of love and mercy. So really, once again, it's Francis picking up on doors that were opened by John Paul II. This Sunday's canonizations give us a chance to reflect on making old things new and seeing Jesus in the everyday. And so as you see the, the reporting, um, on uh, Pope Francis, do you see things that, that maybe uh, aren't quite as new as they seem that, that he does, that, you, that you've seen before? Right, Pope Francis is doing a lot of new things. He has a new style, and yet if you look at what he does day to day, there is so much continuity between uh, popes, between his predecessor Benedict and especially John Paul II. John Paul would invite, for example, people to his lunch almost every single day, people from all walks of life. Pope Francis has that same attitude. Uh, he wants people around him. He's moved into a place where he has lunch every day with, with uh, people of different walks of life. So I, I think Francis is very much inspired by the two people he's going to canonize, uh, John the Twenty-Third, who convened the Second Vatican Council, and John Paul II, who really implemented the council and took it I think, to, to a level that had never been imagined. Reporting for Currents, this is Conrad Aderer.